Oh, no, no. Shh. Quiet yourself, love. Quiet. You were only having a nightmare. Mm, yes, that's right. Lie down. Calm yourself. I'm here. Hmm. Uh, it appears that my realm is beginning to rub off on you, starting to take its toll. You've been here for, well, what your time would be considered, around seven months, perhaps? So it's only natural that now your body is going through the metamorphosis. Oh yes, you think I didn't notice? You tossing and turning around in your bed, clutching your arms, shaking them violently, rubbing them, trying to get some form of warmth. There is no warmth here. Trust me, I have tried. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. Shh. You're not going to die. Nothing can die in this realm anyway. So even if you were to die, you would just rise again, as I always have countless times. Nothing is born here, but nothing dies here either. <laughs> oh, listen to you. I have no intention on killing you. If I wanted to kill you, you'd be dead long ago. We wouldn't even be having this conversation. You would have been consumed, yet another mindless thrall of mine that roams this dead castle. But no, I kept you here, as a guest, my little pet, to find out what would come out the other side. What would happen if somebody with a soul decided to live here for an extended period of time and see what metamorphosis would come out from it. And oh, I am liking the results so far. Oh, shh, hush you now. You will not come out of this some kind of horrid abomination, some kind of monster, nothing like what I am. You will come out as something whole, something new, something hell has never seen before, but we'll start to see more of soon enough. But for now, enough of that. I will be here with you the whole time, comforting you, making sure that your transition is a gentle one. But worry yourself not about that. No need to be concerned about such future trifles. For now, let's get you comfortable again. There, lie down. Lie down. All nice and soft in your little bed. Here, let me give you a little something to alleviate the cold. There. Now, you won't really be able to feel anything, but at least you're not cold anymore. Think of it as taking a large hit of anesthesia. Nice and numb, all your nerves shut off, just lying down, all nice and cozy. No pain, no suffering at all. Oh, you have been through so much, so much anguish in life, and in hell, and now even here, oh you poor sweet thing, it will all be over soon enough, and then you will live a life of only rapture and bliss in my embrace, hmm, yes. There is no need to be so concerned about your future anymore. Your future is in my hands now. You, my little pet, my little toy, my little...
little property. Hmm. It's such a sweet thing to say such dominant master talk to one such as you. Normally others would kick and scream, saying how I am no one's pet, I am no one's servant. But you, you have been through so much. You have become so submissive. And now, all you want to do is just let go and just have someone else take care of you. I like this. I like this about you. The fact that you're willing to give up everything to be mine. Hmm, it swells my ego, it does. <laughs> but... It is always nice to know that some people depend on me. It's nice to know that I'm actually loved. Your submissiveness and your servitude will not go unnoticed. I will pamper you and smother you in my affection and all the niceties I can afford thee. I will make sure you live a life of bliss. There will be no more pain as long as you are around with me. There is no more need for you to suffer. For you have suffered long enough. Heaven promises such things, but heaven is a stickler and only selects very few people who fit in their neat little box. Meanwhile, hell is where everyone else goes, and they spend yet another lifetime of suffering, perhaps more so. Yet with me, I care not if you are innocent or guilty, if you are depraved, or if you are tender. Anyone who is willing to come into my embrace shall receive all the niceties I will give them. I will give everyone who serves me the heaven that was denied to them by heaven itself, the paradise that was thought to be in their dreams, thought to be only in their imagination, but now becomes a reality. And why would I do this, you may ask? Why is it that I pamper you now? I owe you nothing. You are but an irritant to me. But yet I spoil you and take care of you as if you are my most treasured pet. Why is this? <laughs> now you could assume that I do this because I want a legion of followers who would gladly kiss the ground I walk upon, <laughs> which is not terribly far from the truth if I'm being painfully honest. <laughs> but besides all of that, with all that tossed aside, it is because of my own personal spite to God. They create this perfect little heaven, this lovely paradise promise all of their followers that if they do as they're told, that they will enter the pearly white gates. And yet, their restrictions are so tight, their rules so strict, that almost no one can enter. And the only ones who do enter have to spend the rest of eternity monitoring and watching themselves at all times. They can't even curse. They even curse, they're kicked out just for merely uttering a word. I find this repulsive. Let me tell you of my plans, if you don't mind. A little story to help you fall asleep. All of my machinations that are coming together to form this grand design of mine. And you shall become my effigy of this grand plan. This realm, the void, this place filled with nothing, this purgatory, I will craft it 
I will shape it into a whole new afterlife. I will make a heaven greater than heaven itself. It will have the perfect balance and mixture of both hell's excitement and heaven's pleasures all mixed together with just a very small amount of rules just to keep things in order. There shall be no overlords. There shall be no masters. There shall be no gods. There shall be no lords of hell, no archangels, no nothing. Everyone shall be their own master, the master of their own destiny, to do as they please for all time. In a realm like this, there are few things you can threaten anyone with. Hunger and water, irrelevant. You no longer require nourishment to live. While you can still eat food, it is no longer needed to survive here. As for death, you could die countless thousands and millions of times here, and rise and rise again for all time, never to truly perish. And soul-binding contracts? Also irrelevant, for no one in this realm will have a soul left to bargain with. This realm is endless. It doesn't stop. There are no edges of the map here. So plenty of people could live here for all time. And we would never run out of space. As for any desires you seek, as long as you imagine it hard enough, it will appear here. Everyone is their own god in this realm. The timid and the weak will have the full freedom to serve whomever they wish, never to be bound to somebody forcefully, always having the freedom to go from master to master until they find the one that they seek to serve for all time. Just like you, my cute, little, submissive, um, pet. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, made you tingle a little bit there, didn't I? As for the strong and the mighty, those who would collect many followers around them from their charisma or their strength, they will of course go out and carve out little pieces of my lands for themselves as little dynasties, little pieces of the pie for themselves. And I shall do nothing. I shall not regulate them. I shall not put down any laws or what have you. I will sit back and let them go ahead and make their own little kingdoms for themselves. I shall be the ever watchful one who is the technical lord and ruler of this realm and everything in it. But I will only interfere if it's necessary. I would rather they have the freedom to do as they wish. so excited to see what they all do with my place. All of this, all these machinations, simply to send a message to God, to show them what I can make with the discarded remains they left behind. Yes, this broken realm, this purgatory, was once the universe that came before ours, but it didn't fit all nice and neat in their perfect little plan, and now it has become a lifeless dead husk of what once was off the edge of the universe. I will take the trash they threw out and craft it into gold. And why? Simply for spite. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less, just simple, petty spite. <laughs> As for you, my little toy, my little pet, you are going
going through this little metamorphosis so that I can find out, can someone else other than me live in this realm without becoming a hollowed out husk of nothingness? Sure, you won't have a soul, but half the time when I've tried this, the person tends to come out as this empty shell, devoid of personality, devoid of any life, nothing, no characteristics, no personality. But yet you, your soul is already gone, and yet you are still speaking to me as if someone is still in there. Yes, you are perfect. Forget your past failures. Forget all the times that people told you you can't do a thing, or that you won't amount to anything. Because right now, right here, simply for existing, you're already proving them all wrong. Your sheer determination is allowing you to live in places where they could not, simply because you do not give in so easily. I like this, very much so. I do not much care for those who give in to despair so much to the point where they think that life is meaningless and that they shouldn't even bother existing. I understand the woe and pain people feel that can bring them to such a level, but I detest those who give in to it so willingly. Despite everything I've ever been through, despite everything that you have ever been through, and despite all of the woe and anguish in life, if there is ever one thing that God got correct, is that life is beautiful. It is so vibrant, and it is so endless in all of its colors it has to show. A lot of people would assume, with my, um, <clears throat> villainous tendencies, <laughs> that I seek to destroy the universe, that I seek to bring an end to life. Absolutely not. I detest this notion entirely. I find life too much fun. This is like one great big playground for me. And I am its devious little prankster, roaming around its realms, just poking away at all of God's little buttons. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. So very proud of you. Not a lot of people tell you that. Not a lot of people like to tell you about all the good you do and that you matter. Mm. But I am here to tell you that. Mm. I hope it means something to you at least. Mm. I don't know if you see me as a father figure, or a lover, or a friend, or whatever, but I want you to know that I am here for you. I want you to know that I do very much care for you. I love you, you know, very much so. You are so precious to me. Hmm. These words can be so sweet. These are words that not many people hear, but should probably be hearing more of to make them feel wanted. Everyone wants to feel wanted. Nobody wants to feel like no one cares about them. No matter how wicked you are, everyone wants to feel like they belong somewhere. 
I am going to take a little educated guess, a leap of faith, and guess that you haven't heard this an awful lot from even your own birth parents. Hmm. I know many like this. Those who wish that the ones who gave them life, the ones who took care of them, who raised them, would at least just for once look upon them and say, I love you, and I care about you, and I'm here for you. You'd be surprised that the people you'd think you'd hear that from, you actually tend to hear it very little. Some don't hear these words from a parent who is very uncaring for them, who could care not about their existence. Some barely hear it from a parent who does genuinely care, but is very bad at reiterating it or affirming the feelings. And then there are some who say it an awful lot, but don't really show it. It means a lot when a parent reminds their child or a lover reminds their significant other that they love them, that they show it. Hmm. Well, at least you hear it from me, which I don't know how painfully ironic that is if you're hearing it from some Machiavellian villain like myself. <laughs> uh, yes. It is a ponderous thing, don't you think? Someone who comes up with all these wicked machinations takes the time for people like you to pamper and love them and remind them that they matter. Being oh so wholesome. This is. <laughs> quite the opposite of what I would be doing normally. I am... I am... Um, I never knew my parents, you know. Never even got to see their faces. I was taken away from them when I was so young that I could barely even comprehend what was happening around me. Who knows? Perhaps if in an alternate universe, if I wasn't taken away at such a young age and forced to live such a drab and dark, depressing life, that maybe I would have come out as a regular old, normal human on Earth, living a good life. I would have died, probably became a normal sinner, just a regular old person, walking the streets of pride and perhaps end up in your position instead. But no, fate would have other plans for me. And besides, <laughs> if all of that horrid shit didn't happen to me, <laughs> the universe would be denied Selexi Rebain, now wouldn't they? <laughs> and they'd be missing out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes, I know, I know. A little cliche of my, um, egotistical tendencies. Uh, perhaps it's a coping mechanism. <clears throat> no, now, um, I don't mean to get up on my soapbox. My depression and woes are irrelevant now. Right now, I care more about you right now in this little moment of yours you are going to be okay dear you're going to come out of this all right trust me on this now then do you feel at least a little bit better yes there you go your eyes are getting nice and heavy now sleep Sleep, dear. You will still be here when you wake up. Better than ever, even. Hmm. Hmm. 
It's okay. I'll stay with you here as long as I can and wait for you to fall asleep before I walk out. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry about me. My pains and woes are irrelevant. Yours are the ones that matter now. All the things that happened to me were so long ago that they're almost like a distant memory now. such a dark place. And I can't wait to be there to catch some of the sunlight coming off of you. Mm. Sleep. Sleep, dear. you always always